Now that we are evaluating more complicated series parallel resistive circuits, we want to be able to analyze circuits that have more complicated power sources as well. Uh, but don't worry, these sources are not complicated to understand. Um, so in the last module, we introduced independent voltage and independent current sources. And those were nice because um, from the beginning, we're told exactly how much voltage or how much current those sources will supply to our circuit. Um, but dependent power sources are a little bit different because they depend on a current or a voltage value that exists somewhere else in the circuit. So um, for example, a, a dependent voltage source is going to have the schematic symbol like this. It's a diamond instead of a circle. There will be um, a plus and minus to indicate um, which direction the current is um, kind of emanating from. And then the value of the voltage that comes out will be some kind of a constant times something else in the circuit. So this is just an example. This is a constant alpha times Ix where Ix is a current that exists somewhere else in the circuit. Okay, so you might see something like 0.25 times Ia or um, 3 times um, Ib or something like that. Um, these could also be dependent on another voltage that exists somewhere in the circuit. It's just basically a function of some other variable that exists in the circuit. You find that variable, you multiply it by this constant, and then you can find how much voltage is supplied by this dependent voltage source. Similarly, for dependent current sources, The schematic symbol is also a diamond, but this one has an arrow. The arrow can either point up or down. That indicates the direction of current flow. And same story here. The current that's provided by this source will be some kind of a function of another value of something that exists somewhere else. So it could be a voltage drop somewhere across some other resistor that exists somewhere else in our our circuit or it could be also a function of another current that exists through um, another resistor somewhere in our circuit. It's just going to be some kind of a constant times um, whatever that value is. So we find the value, we multiply that by this constant and then we can figure out how much current is delivered by this current source. I'll say where VA is a voltage that exists elsewhere. And I'm going to put in parentheses that IS can also be a function of another current somewhere in the circuit. OK, great. So let me show you an example of a, um, a series parallel circuit that you might see with a dependent source. So suppose we have a circuit with an independent source, Bs, and it's in series with two resistors here. Let's call this R1 and this is R2. And then um, we haven't seen this kind of circuit before, but let's say this bottom wire is connected to kind of a secondary part of the circuit. And in this secondary part, we're going to have a dependent current source, and that will be in parallel with two resistors. Okay, so let's label some of these. Um, let's let I0 be the current that's going through this first stage of our circuit. Let's let this dependent current source be 
given by alpha times I0. Let's let this resistor be R3, and let's let this resistor be R4. And then the voltage drop that's across R4, we'll call that V0. Okay, so um, in this problem, maybe we need to find, we'll say suppose we are asked to find um, V0 over Vs. Now, um, this, this problem formulation is new to us so far in this class, but this is kind of getting us primed for doing amplifier circuits. So this is actually V out over Vs. Um, and so we're, we want to find this expression in terms of all the other circuit elements that are in here. So that way um, we can easily sort of tweak our amplification factor um, by changing the resistance values. But more on that later, let's just um, talk about how we handle these dependent sources in case we encounter some when we're doing our series parallel um, circuit analysis. So in this problem, we want to find um, V0 uh, divided by Vs in terms of alpha, R1, R2, R3, and R4. So that's the first part of our problem. And then um, the second part is if all these resistors are equal, then um, what value, what value of alpha will produce a V out to Vs ratio of 10. Okay, um, so like I said, this might be kind of a different formulation, um, but this is a two-stage circuit. And um, don't get confused by this bottom wire that connects the two, because um, the current that's coming from this V source, it's gonna go through R1, it's gonna come down and go through R2, but once it gets to this node, um, actually none of it is going to split in this direction. And the reason why is because there's no return path for the current can take. Um, the current's not going to go this way and then come back this way through the same node. That would be a violation of Kirchhoff's current law. So um, the I0 that exists in this circuit is, is kind of um, like constrained to this side of the circuit. They just, um, they put this in the diagram to show that they're basically two separate circuits but they're married together in their operation. Okay, so we don't have to worry about um, the current that's going to split this way and combine into this. We can handle this as stage one of our circuit, we can handle this as stage two. So that'll be, um, that'll make things a little less intimidating. So let's, um, let's look at our stage one. So the first part of our circuit, just this simple series circuit with two resistors, we have Vs, we have I0, we have R1, we have R2. Um, so we know in stage two, we're gonna need to know what this I0 is. So let's find that I0. Um, using what we know about series circuits, we know that R1 and R2 are going to combine in series, so they're just going to add, right? So since it's in series, we know that our R equivalent is R1 plus R2. And what else we do we have? We also have Ohm's law. So Ohm's law for us is going to be Vs is equal to I0 times R equivalent. All right, so this implies that my expression for I0 can be written as Vs over R equivalent, which for this series circuit is R1 plus R2. So I now have an expression for I0 in terms of Vs and my resistors. Great. So um, I'm not going to put any numerical values in here because I'm doing this all symbolically. And then later on, I can put in whatever resistance values that will give me the amplification factor that I need. So namely this V0 over Vs equals 10. Um, so now we're ready to 
turn our attention to the stage two of the circuit. So in stage two, we have this parallel circuit here. So I can draw this separately. We have a dependent current source in parallel with these two resistors. The current goes in this direction, um, alpha times I naught, and we have R3, and we have R4, and our voltage drop here is V naught. Um, since this is a parallel circuit, we know the voltage drop across R4 is the voltage drop across R3 is the voltage that's being supplied by this power source. Um, the way this current works, the current is coming down in this direction, so it flows towards this node, and then it's going to split up this branch or up this branch. Okay, so um, I can just label this as, I'll call this I1, I'll call this current I2. So we know by KCL that um, alpha I naught, the current coming into the node, is equal to I1 plus I2. Great, now um, if we apply Ohm's law at each one of these branches, by Ohm's law, um, we know that the voltage drop across here is V naught, so V naught is equal to I1 going through R R3, and we know that the voltage drop across R4 is also V naught, so V naught is equal to I2 times R4, and now what we can do is if I solve both of these equations for I1 and I2, then I can substitute into this one, and now I have a function with I naughts and V naughts in them, and um, that will get me closer to the expression that I was asked for at the beginning. So let's do that. Um, our Ohm's law equation, V naught equals I1 times R3, implies that I1 is equal to V naught over R3. Our Ohm's law equation at the other branch, V naught is equal to I2 times R4, implies that I2 is equal to V naught over R4. Now, um, our equation for I naught from stage one was I naught is equal to Vs over R1 plus R2. So now what I'm gonna do is um, my KCL equation was alpha I naught equals I1 plus I2 I'm going to take these things and substitute it into here. So this gives me V naught over R3 plus V naught over R4. So I have V naught times 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. Great. And that's equal to alpha times I naught. Now, in place of I naught, I can put this equation that I have from stage one substitute for I naught. This gives me alpha times Vs over R1 plus R2 is equal to V naught times 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. Now I'm closer to getting my expression for V naught over Vs, which is the first thing that I was asked for. So it turns out that after doing a little bit of algebra, I can bring my V0 over Vs over here, and the terms, um, all the other terms on the other side gives me alpha over R3 times R4 times R3 plus R4 in the numerator and R1 plus R2 in the denominator. So here's my expression for V0 over Vs. Now, um, the second part of the question for this example problem was if R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R4, what alpha will make V0 over Vs equal to 10? Okay, so first simplicity, let's just let um, 
all these resistors be one. So if we let all these resistors be one, then our V naught over Vs, which we want to be 10, is going to be alpha over one times one times one plus one over one plus one. So this is two over two, and then this is divided by one, so this is just going to be alpha is equal to 10. Okay, so that is how we use the um, a two-stage circuit to solve for um, a dependent source and how much this source is actually providing. So this particular example was for a current source. You can try it, it works the same way for a voltage source and you may or may not have a two-stage circuit like this, but I wanted to show you an example so in case you do encounter something like this, you'll know how to handle it.